So I mentioned a few weeks back that I, I bought a new car. I bought a, a, a Subaru. I'm a first-time Subaru owner, and so many people, when they find that out, or if they're driving one or they know of, they've been telling me, oh, Subaru people love Subarus. They're loyal to Subaru. Once they have Subaru, they never leave Subaru. And so I owned a Lexus for 20 years, so I'm a customer pretty good, but so far, I love Subaru too. And the thing is, it's not just the car performance. What I love is how much work and effort they put into helping you love your Subaru and keep loving it. Loving the whole Subaru experience. They actually have a program entitled Lo the Love Encore Program. I think that's a weird title. I'd call it I Love My Subaru Program. But I get the point of it. And what they do is they want you to love it as much as you did when you drove off, uh, off um, their, uh, what do they call that place? Their lot. Yes. <laughs> and so what they do is they call you after a couple of weeks. And they say, hey, we'd like to set up an appointment. They're all kind of technologies and different features. We want to walk you through it. And you're more than welcome to read through the 140-page uh, manual if you'd like, but we're happy to help. And they will spend a couple hours with you, and they will even do it over time. Like, there's any time. There's someone dedicated. There's literally a Love Encore specialist that's available to help all the time. So I drove up, and then when I drove up, uh, as soon as I pulled it, the manager came right out to the car to say hi. My uh, Love Encore specialist came. He sat in the car. First thing he turned to me, he said, I know you. And I said, Really? He said, uh, yeah, I go to Unity. He said, I, I love the church. He said, but I work on Sunday, so I don't get to um, do it, and I'm really happy to help you. So he went through, and he was fabulous and wonderful. The session uh, was great. And at the end of the session, he said, so, Rev, I know that you love jokes. So I would be remiss if I didn't end our session by telling you a joke. So he told me the joke, and I knew the joke, but I didn't say I knew the joke because it was so nice uh, you know, to, to, and thoughtful to even do that. And um, he told it well, and I actually laughed. And so here's the interesting thing um, that I thought, is that he said, I know you love jokes. He didn't say, I really love your jokes. He said, I know you love jokes. I think he meant to say that, though. <laughs> but the bottom line is, at the end of it, you know what? I felt loved. I felt valued. I felt cherished. I felt appreciated. And you could say, well, that's just good customer service. You could just say, well, heck, you're his minister. He might have kicked up the niceness up a notch or two. But the fact is, the bottom line is, I felt loved. I felt cared for it. I felt valued and appreciated. Today we're talking about love. Because at the heart of it, we all want to feel loved. We all want to feel valued and cherished, whether it's in a car dealership or in our relationship or in our work. We want all to feel love. So this week, I couldn't think of a joke so I'm going to tell you the joke that Bert, my Love Encore specialist, told me. This is what he actually told me. So this man's walking along a beach in Florida, and he stumbles across an old lamp, and he picks it up, and he rubs it, and a genie pops out. And he said, wow, you mean this genie thing's for real? The genie says, yeah, except the deal is you only get one wish. So think carefully. And so the guy thinks for a while, and he says, well, you know, I always want to go to Hawaii. You know, I'm scared to fly, and I'm kind of seasick, so I wouldn't use a cruise, do a cruise or anything. So could you build me a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive and visit there whenever I feel like it. And uh, the genie says, what? They said, man, that's impossible. Can you think of all the logistics involved in that? Can you think about all the supports and how deep into the Pacific they got to go to the bottom? Can you think of all the concrete and the steel? That is too much, man, too much. So no, you're going to need to think of something else that you really want. And so the guy thinks, and then, and then he says, well, you know, my other wish would be is I really want to understand women. I want to know what they feel inside, and I want to know what they're thinking, especially when they give me the silent treatment. I want to know, you know, why, why they're crying. I want to know what they want, even when I say ask and they say nothing. You know, I wish I knew how to love a woman and how to wait, truly make a woman happy. And the genie said, would you like that bridge with two lanes or four lanes? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and you know, you know, the thing about that joke is that at some level, it's pointing to the fact that love isn't easy. When you look around at the world, it shows that we aren't always great at love, at the divorce rate, you know, the fact that families have conflict and are estranged from each other, the fact that sometimes friends get into an argument and they never talk to each other again, by the levels of hate that we have in our world, the, the levels of racism and homophobia and misogyny. You know, the violence and the abuse, the murder, the wars, I could go on 
But I think all of it point to the fact that as a human family, we don't exactly live Jesus' commandment to love one another as effectively as we could. I want you to think about the amount of love in your life right now. Think about the love that you feel, the level of love you experience, and the amount of love that you express. And I ask you, how many people know that regardless of what that amount is right now, you know there's a greater capacity of love for you and in you than you're currently experiencing right now? There's more love in you than you've got in your life right now? How many people have someone in your life and you know they love you? You know they love you, but they don't exactly show and demonstrate and express their love in the greatest way. Anybody have somebody like that? And how many people have someone in your life that you're not as connected to and you have a hard time showing them uh, your love and your care for them? Anybody have somebody like that? You know, it is, it is absolutely true. Love is not an easy thing to master and demonstrate consistently in our lives. And yet the Bible resoundingly says how important love is in life. The greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is to love others as ourselves. You know, Jesus said that my new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. He said, you will know my disciples by how they love one another. Paul said that love is the fulfilling of the law. Paul said that you can have knowledge of mysteries and all of the possessions in the world, but if you have love and not, have not love, you have nothing. And he also said, faith, hope, and love, these three remain, but the greatest of these is love. The book of John says God is love. So if it's true what it says in Genesis, that we're all created in the image and likeness of God and God is love, that means we are created in the image and likeness of love that we are created here to love, to experience love, and express love. Love is the thing that fulfills all of God's law and spiritual laws, and it's the thing that fulfills our lives. So if we want to have a better life, a more fulfilling life, you know, it's time to love. It's time to learn how to love at a deeper level. So we're going to look at the three things that it's going to take for us uh, to, to love at a deeper level. And the first one is to open our hearts. You know, when it comes to love, as much as we want it and desire it, I think at some level we're afraid of love. Afraid to get hurt, you know, afraid to get rejected, afraid our heart will be broken, you know, afraid that it will not be reciprocated in a way. And the universal response to our fear of love is that we close our hearts. It is like this defense mechanism and an inner impulse to self-protect. We close off our hearts because we do not want to get hurt. And particularly in matters of love. We close our heart to hurts that have happened in the past. We close our hearts to anticipated hurt in the future. But you know what we even close our heart to? When we have too much love in our lives. Have you ever felt love, so much love it kind of scared you? That it almost overwhelmed you to feel that much love? That you felt kind of vulnerable? You felt almost out of control? You know, and we close off our hearts when we feel too much love. I had a bunch of friends, we did this little mastermind thing, and I'd be like, tell them how much I love them and all this. And we all felt so much love, and we're like, man, we, like, we had no idea what to do, so we just punch each other in the arm and said. <laughs> I mean, really, we punch each other in the arm, it's like, you goofball, and walked away, because we didn't know what to do with that much love. <laughs> so I ask you, where in your life is your heart closed? Where in your life are you maybe not loving as fully and deeply and freely as you could live. Sometimes we would rather keep our heart closed than risk opening our heart to love. But I'll tell you, it's a greater risk keeping our heart closed. It's a greater risk to our happiness, to our peace, and a level of joy and fulfillment. Somebody once said, the, the heart is like an umbrella. It tends to work better when it's open. Let me ask you a question right now. Just check in with yourself. And I saw the question, is my heart open right now or is it closed in some way to someone? Listen to the words of Scripture and what they say about the power and the importance of the heart. In Matthew it says, love, your, love God with all your heart. In Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. In Jeremiah, if you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. To say all your heart, to love God, trust God with all your heart, seek God with all your heart, it means your whole heart. And to do it wholeheartedly means to do it with an open heart. 
many other scriptures about heart. Beatitude said, blessed are the pure in heart. Psalm 51 says, created me a clean heart, O Lord. Why? Because we know the importance of having an open heart. One of my favorites in Proverbs, and it's such a powerful truth, it says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Guard your heart that it is pure and clean, because everything you do will flow from it. The prerequisite to love deeper, to love in a greater and more profound and fulfilling way, is to open your heart. How many people heard of heart math? Everybody? So they do studies about heart intelligence, heart coherence. And one of the things it says is that we have the power to, con to open our hearts. And it's a three-step thing. It's only like a two-minute meditation practice. But opening your heart and practicing is an important thing. I'll kind of go a little quicker than the two minutes, but here's what it is. The first one is just to take a deep breath and relax and let go. So let's just do that. Whenever I take a deep breath, relax, and just consciously open your heart and breathe into your heart space. Again, take another breath and just feel what it's like to have your heart open. Feel how light, more peaceful you are. And just open your heart. The second one is to feel a level of love and appreciation for something or anything. That when your heart's open, just feel some love and appreciation. And whether it's uh, for a spouse or a child or a family member, you know, whether it's for a puppy or nature or, be or a beach or a home or your home or sunset or ice cream or bacon, whatever it is. <laughs> So it's a, it's a deep breath and open your heart and now feel a sense of love and appreciation for something in your life. And then the last one is just to affirm your openness to love. My heart is open and I am open to love. Half voice together. My heart is open and I am open to love. Deep breath. Again, half voice. My heart is open and I am open to love. Deep breath. Just that little practice of opening your heart gets us back to our true nature, which is peace, which is loving, which opens ourselves to wisdom and understanding and compassion and solution uh, and, and creativity. I mean, it opens us to stay more grounded and centered and be less pulled by fear and doubt and anxiety. Again, the Bible reminds us, open your heart. Trust God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart. See God with all your heart, which is a resounding reminder that the most powerful thing you can do for lo to, to love and for love is to practice opening your heart. The second one is to love yourself. You know, when you hear the thing, love yourself, it sounds nice, it sounds cute. Um, you know, maybe it sounds weird, maybe it sounds selfish, egotistical, narcissistic. Alan Cohen, the great spiritual writer, says, Loving yourself is the first and foremost responsibility for us. The first and foremost responsibility because if we can't love ourselves fully, we absolutely limit our ability to experience, to feel, and express love. So my question for you is, what does loving yourself mean to you? What would loving yourself more look like for you? How good would you say you are at loving yourself? In what ways are you not loving yourself as well as you possibly could? And in what area in your life right now that you could use some of your own love? There's a wonderful poem I use in the prosperity class called uh, Time Somebody Told Me. Um, it's by a guy named Quartidius Hall, and here's how it goes. Time somebody told me that I'm lovely, good, and real, that I'm beautiful inside, if they only knew how that would make me feel. Time somebody told me that my mind is quick, sharp, and full of wit, that I should keep on trying and never quit. Time somebody told me how they loved and needed me, how my smile is filled with hope and my spirit sets them free, how my eyes shine full of light and how good they feel when they hold me tight. Time somebody told me so I had a talk with myself, just me, nobody else, because it was time somebody told me. So my question is, what are the things you tell yourself about yourself? Are the things that you tell yourself about yourself, 
Are they kind and caring? Are they supportive and encouraging? Are they loving and appreciative? What do you tell you about you? You know, loving yourself is more than just giving yourself a spa day, although that's a lovely thing, or, you know, going on a regular vacation and doing those things. Those are important. But if you go to the depth of what loving yourself means, it is about making peace and truly accepting who we are fully. It is about appreciating and valuing ourselves. It's about enjoying being who we are and being true to ourselves. You know, the more we love ourselves, the more love we have to give to others. And the healthier our love is for ourselves, the healthier the love we can give others. And this whole idea to love yourself is to do that same practice we did of opening your heart, but instead of appreciating and loving something or someone else, it's appreciating and loving something about you. So I'm going to take a deep breath now. And what is one thing you love and appreciate about you? What do you love and like about you? What are you proud and happy about to be you? And can you appreciate you, your gifts, your talents, your ability, the difference that you make? You are the temple of God. And so it's important to love and appreciate your temple, your body, your smile, that vehicle that allows you to live this amazing and wonderful life. And then to just even say a little thing, I love myself right where I am. You know, I love myself in this moment and every moment. And the reason I think it's important to say and meditate some of that, because sometimes we only love ourselves when we're on our A game, when we're proud and doing these great things. But we're not so much in love with ourselves when we mess up and we're having a bad hair day to boot. And it, it sounds silly. You know, I have a prayer partner, and one of the things she says, like when I'm having a tough time and I've kind of, you know, unloaded and shared with her, she always says, buddy, I love you right where you are. I love you right there. Because sometimes it's hard to love yourself right there when you're messing up or things aren't working well. And it's a reminder to all of us to love ourselves and to love ourselves all the time. The thing about loving ourselves, it makes us feel good, more connected with who we are, but it also creates to us to be an old, more, a greater open channel for love to flow through us, to ourselves and others. And the final one um, to love in greater ways is to do the work of love. Love takes work, and we got to do the work of love if we want to expand and experience greater love. And there are two things that make love hard. Uh, the first one is that people feel and express and like and receive love in different ways. We're not all the same. And everybody, anybody read the book or heard of the book, The Five Lung Love Languages? by Gary Chapman, and the whole point of it is that we all express and receive love in different ways. Here are the five love languages. Words of affirmation, that, that's an expression of love. To say things that are complimentary, that are validating, that are uplifting, encouraging, you know, that make someone feel uh, cherished and appreciated. And the second one is quality time. To spend time together, whether it's talking or hiking or going for a walk or playing a game or, or watching a movie, time together and being present with each other um, absolutely makes a difference. And it also gives us one of the greatest gifts in life, and that is to receive someone's undivided attention. Quality time is a powerful expression of love. The third one is acts of service, to do any nice thing for someone. You know, maybe uh, cook them a meal or help them out uh, in, in a situation. Or There are all kinds of different acts of service that are really nice that is an expression of love. Number four is um, gifts. And whether it's flowers and a card and a gift, but little tokens of appreciation and expression is a, is a great um, language of love. And the final one is touch, physical affection. You know, whether it's uh, caressing or holding hands or uh, a punch in the arm from a guy, whatever it is. That, well, those acts of physical affection actually make us feel closer. Our hearts are uh, really open. And the interesting thing is that different people have different kinds. So, like, suppose you gave some flowers to someone who likes words of appreciation. They may not feel as love and connected. And suppose you say words of appreciation, but somebody really likes physical touch. I mean, you can see. And so here's the message I think the book has, is that for you really to love effectively, you got to think deeply, pay attention, and think about what's meaningful and important for the other person. Sometimes we like to do it the way we do it. Somebody once said, 
um, when you are a hammer, you think everything looks like a nail. What that meaning is like we think, well, I, I mean love, and this is the way I express my love. But if we want to go to a deeper level of love, we need to think about what the other person likes. You know, and sometimes we get stuck in our own rut. So, you know, love is calling us to expand ourselves, to see people differently, to do things differently. And it's not easy because sometimes we like staying in our own comfort zone. But love is calling us to expand and express. And it takes work. So the second reason love takes work is when people are not nice and we mess up, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to keep our hearts open. It's hard to love someone when you feel hurt or you feel betrayed. Sometimes it's hard to love ourselves when we do something uh, stupid. I mean, the Bible says, lo love your enemies. And what it's saying is keep your heart open even when the behavior you or other person demonstrate um, you know, isn't as good as you want. And, if it's, and, and just with that same practice, opening your heart um, and appreciating others and yourself, we may not be at the place to appreciate the other person, but then we need to go to the prayer, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Anybody remember what Solomon asked for when, he asked, when God asked what he wanted? Okay, I'll help you out. There we go. <laughs> he wanted an understanding heart. But sometimes if you have someone in your life and it's not clicking, maybe just pray, not just for a clean heart, but an understanding heart. Because that puts us in a place to go back to that practice of opening our heart and being able from our heart to send that person love and peace and blessings and knowing that things will work out okay. Love takes work. And if you want a better life, we need to be willing to do the work of love. And what happens is inevitably, your heart's going to close again. And like the shampoo bottle says, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so when you mess up on working uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the love thing and it doesn't work and your heart closes, go back to number one. Open your heart. Open your heart to yourself and do the work of love. Your heart's going to close. Let me give you an example. It's just part of the deal. Anybody ever meditate and your mind wanders? Anybody ever happen that? Like almost like all the time? Well, in the same way the mind wanders in meditation, quiet, quiet your mind, that the heart closes and the same way your mind wanders and you have to keep opening your mind, the same thing with your heart. Nobody's heart is open all the time. It's work. It's spiritual work, the greatest spiritual work to do. And so don't get mad if your heart closes again because it's, it's built in protective, but we can override it with love. And so we have to keep doing the work. We try, uh, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. It's just a cycle. Nobody gets to that place where your heart's open 24-7, or at least I haven't met them yet. And, uh, and it's an important work for us. Emmett Fox says the most powerful energy and force in the universe is love. And if we could get to that place of mastering love, of expressing love in greater ways, we would be the happiest and most powerful beings in the world. Open your heart. If the only thing you get from this is that little practice to go to your heart and open it, to feel love and appreciation, and to affirm, I am open to love, it will change your life. Do not underestimate the power of opening your heart. Because as Scripture says, love it with all heart, all your heart. Trust with all your heart. Seek God with all your heart. It means open your heart all the time. Your heart has an intelligence that will guide you. Just your job is opening it. Keep opening it. Keep opening it. Open your heart. Love yourself. Do the work of love. It isn't easy stuff, but it is the thing that makes life fulfilling. If you want a better life, it's time. It's time to love. God bless you all.